<laughs> Subscribers are good. All right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do here is uh, first we're going to pipe this and just look at it as a frame. So let's turn this surface off. I don't really need the surface, but what I do want is to deconstruct it into its constituent parts. Woo. Woo. Yeah, woo's right. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not deconstruct. We don't deconstruct <laughs> not yet. Woo. Yeah, not woo. Uh, we want to subdivide it. So I'm going to subdivide it. So I'll just copy these down here and replug in the information I need for them. Uh, so we want to subdivide it. And uh, let's see, we want to borrow the properties here. The count is what we're looking for. So we need, so our X count up top, let, this is what I'm getting at, okay? So our X count up top, our X and Y, our subdivisions at the top are four, right? We have four cells on either side. At the bottom, because we use the centroid, means we only have three. So, um, we can use our mathematical operators again to make this very, very simple. So I will uh, go to, well, let me get the right ones first, actually. These aren't right. So delete that, delete that. And the surface I'm going to subdivide is, what, not that, this. So then I want my grid count Y. I'll plug that into V. No, I won't plug it in yet. I'll work backwards rather than confusing you. Okay, so from the U and V, I want those values to be subtracted by one. So I'm gonna to go to math, gonna go right here to uh, subtraction. It's under math operators. Moth. Mothra. No Godzilla fans? All right, so. <laughs> Uh, so then we go into uh, integer, and uh, we're going to have two separate values that are coming down, the x and the y, both of which are being reduced by 1. So I'll copy this down real quick, and I'll change my integer to 1. And I can just plug that into the b value of both of these, uh, but I also have to set the integer. Okay, so the setup here, we've got subtract. I copied it down twice because I need a U, and I'll just plug it in now. I need a U and a V. And this integer, which I renamed 1 so I can see the 1, I go to uh, set integer, and I make it a 1. I'll pause there for a second. Remember, this is under set integer. All right, and then the information I want after I unplug the U count down there, uh, the information I want is the grid Y and grid X. So the X, even though you can't really, well, let me just pull it aside and you can see. The X, I'll plug into the A. And the Y, I'll plug into the A. And that's my subdivide. But now I need to reintroduce, again, surface ISO trim. And I'll complete that cycle there. So this is surface utility. You guys will see that eventually, at some point, I'll start dropping off the tags once you've seen it enough times. But for now, I'll continue to do it. And then I'll subdivide that. So when I turn off the subdivide surface, I can turn off. Uh, what you trim. Yeah, that's that tricky one. Where did I put that surface? Yeah. Anyway. So now you can see here at, at this level, I have it fully subdivided because I've got my curves going from one to another. This is what you should be seeing at the bottom. You should have your surface subdivided like this. And uh, so this is how I'm going to do this real quick. Um, I need to place a pipe 
on all of these elements. And I'm really just, for now, I'm, you know, it's very schematic. So I'm just going to place one pipe across the whole thing with rounded edges. Um, and that just looks like this. So I go to pipe. That's under surface, freeform. And the information that's coming out of this deconstruct B rep is in packets of four. So I want to flatten that list. For edges? Huh? For edges? Uh, yeah, for the edges. Okay. Additionally, um, I'm going to grab the curves. And I'm just going to place this in here just as a conduit. Because the lines that I'm seeing you know, as my legs, my diagonals, I need those to come in. And that could actually just be flattened on the output. Doesn't really matter. So the reason here, like, if you get, if you kind of like organize yourself back into a corner and you don't really have a way of getting wires around without it being really confusing, you can also use a, a like parameter, one of these ones from the params column up here. You can use that as a conduit to start bending around things. Yeah, I'll zoom out a little. So this is getting really crazy. I'll clean it up in a little bit. But so uh, you might be looking back to where these are coming from. They're reading off of the grid X and grid Y. So I'm creating a pipe, uh, not the radius. Sorry, I don't want the radius to plug in. Let me disconnect this for now. So I have uh, the edges at the bottom. I've got the curves of the legs. And then I also need the curves, which are these, at the top of my frame. So I'm going to pull this over here. So I've got one, two, and three. And all of those, let me just drop a radius onto this right now. I'll do 0.55. because I'm working in feet, so I need it to be kind of small. All of these can just get added on. It's going to look kind of wonky right here for a sec. But they just get added on to the frame. Start hiding things I don't need. Move up to the front. My pipe is looking good. So this is what you guys should have at this point. OK, so I'm going to uh, pull this full screen here so you can get caught up. But uh, are there any questions right now um, beyond just trying to figure out specifics? So I'll pull this aside. And I'll compact it a little bit for you. So I'm going to pause the video and try and clean this up because this is looking a little crazy. And then uh, I'll get you another snapshot in the video of it all cleaned up. Okay. I've just cleaned it up for you all. So this will, this is now on your video. But I wanted to make another point here about the way the mathematical operators work is that they actually have an order. Okay, so the order is that A is going to subtract B from it. So um, when you're plugging this in, the reason I crossed over 1 down to the bottom is because I actually had to have my grid count Y of 4 be subtracted by 1. So the 4 has to go in the A, and the 1 has to go in the B to get 3. Okay, otherwise you're going to wind up with 1 minus 4, which is negative Negative three. That's not good. No, no, it's not good. Okay. So um, with that, I'm going to stop the video here. You'll have this whole thing on snapshot, um, and you can refer to it there. Yes? Um, 
So we do all this stuff in Grasshopper and stuff, and it's still red in Rhino. So does that mean it's not technically built? It is not technically built yet, right? Oh. We're still in level two of Inception. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. So in like in like later in the class, we would figure out how to. We will. Yeah, we will make it live. Is that the just? It's not the simple just right click bake, right? Uh, yes, yeah, basic, basically yes, um, but. You can, uh, that's the basic form of baking it and making it live, and then it just drops it onto the default layer and it makes it that way. But um, you can, I'll sh we'll go through the process of how you bake in a very controlled way. Oh. And there are some really clever, like, baking toggles and stuff. You could just click a button and it rebakes everything for you and stuff. Oh. And there's some really cool shortcuts for that. We'll get to it.